Hi, I'm Dr. Nadmuda, Medical Director, Genesis Pertlity and Laparoscopy Center. Today, I'm going to cover a very, very important topic about egg freezing. It's very important because it's essential and a lot of young women need to know the information and burst all their myths about egg freezing. You have information, you have knowledge that is power and that will help you make good decisions. Egg freezing is where a woman is stimulated and eggs are collected from the ovary under anesthesia and they are frozen, used later for future fertility. Reasons could be anything. It could be social, personal, medical or any reason where they don't want to get pregnant then but they know that they want to have a baby in the future. These eggs may or may not be used in the future but if they need to, these are like gold mines. The best is always subjective, whenever you decide, that is, the time and the age. Having said that, the earlier you decide, the better quality and more number of oocytes you get. The earlier you freeze, there's also higher chance of having a successful live birth when you plan a pregnancy. Having said that, the best time to freeze is late 20s and early 30s and do not leave longer. Of course it is possible. Whenever you decide is the age because if you don't freeze then and if you think about later, it will be even getting harder. After 30, the quality of those sites starts slightly dropping and after 35, there's a steep drop. So the sooner you decide, you freeze it and if you decide at 35, just go ahead and freeze the X. It could be anything. They're 30 and they don't have a partner yet. They're 30, they're divorced. They're 30, they're widowed. They're 30, the career is stopping them to have children. These are all the personal or social reasons. And the medical reasons as well. Somebody must have had a cancer and they need a chemotherapy. The chemotherapy will kill all the ovarian reserve. That's why we recommend freezing the eggs. Another reason is some medical conditions. They are given drugs which are immunosuppressants and these immunosuppressants can harm the reserve in the ovaries. That's why in those women also we recommend freezing the eggs. So personal reasons around age 30 and medical reasons, it could be the drugs they are supposed to be using or the cancers. First thing, lifestyle changes. Stop alcohol, stop smoking or vaping, any other addictions and drink less coffee or no coffee. And all this should start at least six weeks before whenever you plan to freeze the eggs. Sleep well, manage stress. These are all the lifestyle changes. Eat healthy, eat fruits and vegetables and lean proteins and take micronutrients which improve the egg health. Maintain weight, just in case you are over BMI of 30, try to drop the weight and you don't need to drop to the ideal weight, but even if you drop 5% of the existing weight, somebody's 80 kilos, drop 4 kilos, a minimal drop will increase the quality of the oocytes. Sometimes the number can also increase. And the last thing is exercise. Do exercise, do get into the habit of exercise. Sternose exercise is not recommended, but moderate exercise at least 3-4 to four days a week is highly recommended. Egg freezing has eight steps. One, after you decide, go and see a fertility specialist. Get an ultrasound scan then. Get an ovarian reserve test done, which is called anti-mullerian hormone AMH, and have a counseling regarding how much is the ovarian reserve, what is the chance of getting good oocytes and how many. Second step is decision counseling and consenting. As per the ART law, it is mandatory to consent for egg freezing. So once these logistics are sorted out, the third step is going to the fertility clinic the day one of the period and get some blood tests, an ultrasound scan done and decide the dosage of injections you need to take. The third step, the hormone injections, you start second day or third day and you take daily injections, anything up to 9 to 12 days and these are given to grow the follicles which are in the ovaries. The next step is ultrasound scans. This is done on day one and alternate day from day six onwards to check the progress of growth of the follicles. These follicles are like bubbles with fluid and there's a tiny, 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 tiny egg enclosed 
on the margin of it. Then comes the hormonal test. Again, these are done three to four times during the cycle to assess one, the progress, two, to decide which medication is suitable and also to suggest the quality of the oocytes which we are going to retrieve. Once all this is done, there is a day where a scan is done and the follicle size is assessed to be ready and mature and we can collect the eggs. That day we give something called a trigger injection. And then comes the D day. The D day is the day where you are anesthetized and the eggs are collected under the ultrasound guidance. Each follicle is aspirated and that fluid has oocytes and that fluid is handed over to the embryologist. And what's the final step? From this fluid, the oocytes are filtered, checked under the microscope, removed and they are frozen by a method called vitrification. That's it about the oocytes and then post-op recovery from one to three days and that's it. You have your eggs frozen and you have your good health and hopes in your heart. That's a very interesting but a challenging question. How many we want and how many we have are two different scenarios. The more number of eggs are frozen, the higher the chance of live birth in the future. Having said that, because of the late decision, sometimes the number of oocytes available can be less. I'll just give a rough idea about what gives good number of chances for live birth. Up till age of 35, 15 oocytes give a chance of 85% chance of a live birth. 35 to 37, you need at least 20 oocytes to give the same success rate of 85%. 38 to 40, you almost need 40 oocytes to give the same success rate. And having said that, getting 40 oocytes at that age is very, very difficult. After the 40, we need at least 30 oocytes to have a 50% chance of getting a live birth. Bear in mind, having a live birth and having chromosomally normal baby are two different things. The higher the age, higher the risk of chromosomal anomalies. So, if someone needs egg freezing, they ideally decide sooner than leave it till later. How long the eggs can be frozen depends on why they have frozen. Suppose it's a social or a personal reason, they can be frozen for 10 years as per the law. So what happens after 10 years? The right to the National Registry to seek permission to extend the renewal and they inform the fertility clinic where the eggs are frozen and pay for the extension and get it extended. However, if the oocytes or eggs are frozen for medical reasons or for the cancer or any immunosuppressant drugs, the extension can be done until the age of 50 of the women. Personal reasons, 10 years. Medical reasons, up to the age of 50. But consent each time and extend the renewal from the fertility clinic. Of course, every procedure has certain risks, small or big, but egg freezing has become such a common procedure. In experienced hands and a good centre, the risks are close to zero. So choose the centre and the doctor wisely. So what are the risks? The common risks with any procedure could be bleeding, infection, damage to the organs which are around where we operate and what is around the ovaries which is bladder and bubble. Again, remember in experienced hands and a good centre, these risks are close to zero. One important thing women with PCO should remember, normally let's say someone has 10 follicles, we stimulate for those 10 follicles to grow. But in women with PCO, sometimes there can be 30, 40, 50, 60 follicles. And when we stimulate, boom, all those follicles try to grow. And obviously the person's tummy is as big as it is. That can fill the tummy, that can cause bloating, that can be fluid retention, discomfort, and the fluid can accumulate both in the tummy as well as the lungs. This is called hyperstimulation. Hyper is excess. We don't intend to, but that's how the PCO women ovaries react. The per treatment is done in a experienced hands and in a good center. They can predict it, they can identify it, and they can also treat it. So if someone has PCO and they want egg freezing, make sure they choose a right center and a right doctor. Exciting, now they're ready for a child. So they go to the center, they tell the center that they want to have the fertility plan sorted. And then uh, when it is time, after the ultrasound and blood tests are done, these frozen oocytes are removed from the tank, which they are stored at minus 197 degrees, and they're brought to the room temperature of uh, 37 degrees. And this process takes around 10 minutes. So that's called thawing. That's the first step. Second step, the chosen partners or donor sperm. One sperm is injected into one oocyte 
and then within 24 hours the fertilization happens. Step number three, these fertilized embryos are allowed to grow in the incubator in an IVF lab for three to five days. Step number four, these embryos are transferred into the uterus of the woman who intends to get pregnant. So what happens with the excess embryos? They're again frozen in the liquid nitrogen at minus 197 degrees. So that's how the frozen eggs are used to make a baby in the future when the woman desires. Technically, the freezing and using the frozen eggs have evolved a lot. There are five areas which have huge impact on the success rate. Most important is the age of the woman at which the eggs are frozen. The lower the age, the higher the success rate. Number two, the number of eggs that are frozen. The more number of eggs, obviously, the more chance of getting more embryos. Number three, the experience of the person who has frozen these eggs. Embryos are easy to freeze. Eggs are slightly difficult. They're delicate and the experience matters there. Number four, this is for later when they reuse the sperm quality. The sperm quality of the partner or the donor with which this egg is fertilized plays a crucial role that the egg alone will not suffice. We also need a good sperm to get good embryos and a successful pregnancy. And most importantly, the fertility clinic right from the beginning to the end, it does play a major role in having a successful live birth. Some important points to remember, once the eggs are frozen, 80 to 90% survival rate and there's around 70% fertilization rate and about 40 to 50 percent live childbirth rate. Do not believe that it's 100 percent. Be practical, be realistic and understand there are limitations. A lot of women think and ask me, does egg freezing guarantee a child in the future? No, it does not. There are a lot of factors. If you want a guaranteed child as soon as possible, at a younger age, get more number of eggs. And then of, of course, what is not in their control is having a good sperm in the spouse and choosing the right fertility center. There is a very high chance of a successful live birth in the future if they come at a younger age and have more frozen eggs. That's such a big myth and so many women are worried about this. Freezing will not affect the ovarian reserve. What happens actually is there's a bank and from that regularly certain number of eggs are released to be used in that month. So what's in the reserve is not touched at all. So will the ovarian reserve be reduced with the egg freezing? Absolutely no. Ladies, this is a very important topic because you've heard so many things and you believe a lot of things which are not true. Myth number one, the painful lot of injections. There are injections, I won't say no. The tablet forms are still experimental, but it will come someday. For this moment of time, we had injections. The woman needs to take at least one to two injections for say nine to 12 days. So talk about 20 injections, but bear in mind, the needle is tiny, 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 tiny. The insulin syringes you might have seen any of the family member using. So number one myth, a lot of painful injections. No pain, no gain, you'll get eggs at the end of it. Myth number two, egg reserves exhaust. No, they do not exhaust. We use the follicles which are supposed to be used in that month and waste it. What is going to be wasted is used so egg reserves do not exhaust. Myth number three, once somebody has egg freezing, the side effects of the injections last forever. No, they do not. It's if you eat in a restaurant yesterday, will it the effects last lifelong? No. Same with these hormone injections. The side effects of the hormones last for 24 hours and they're out of your body. What remains is here, but nothing in the body. Myth number four, only 50% of the eggs survive. That's wrong. Maybe there were days initially, but the survival rate in the eggs, if they're frozen at a younger age, is almost 100% and an average is 80 to 90%. So do not worry about the survival. Egg freezing guarantees a future pregnancy. It kind of does, but not absolutely. It does guarantee a future baby only if the eggs are good quality, the sperm is good quality and the IVF center is good. So please do not believe egg freezing guarantees a future child. Egg freezing is only for women over 35. Egg freezing is only for women who are single. Egg freezing is only for medical conditions. Absolutely no. All this is a myth and a dissolution. Egg freezing is someone who wants fertility in the future but they are not ready now and to preserve good quality oocytes sooner.
Ekfreezing is new and it is experimental. That's an absolute myth. Ekfreezing has been there and the first baby born from Ekfreezing was in 1986. Can you believe it? 39 years ago. So it's not new at all. It's not experimental. Proceed with Ekfreezing if you need to. So the whole purpose of doing this educational video and giving information is do not believe what you hear. Listen to the expert. Whoever says whatever they say, identify your own circumstances and act accordingly. And when you make a decision, stick with it and don't be carried away with something you hear. Always clarify with an expert. And if you're thinking of egg freezing, all the very best. Decide soon and act soon.